What's going on guys, this is Rob, and the trailer for the new Hawkeye show just launched, which as we know is going to feature Kate Bishop, and so I figured we would make a video, Kate Bishop Explained. Now, here's the thing. Kate Bishop first appeared in Young Avengers Volume 1, Issue Number 1 in April of 2005, and she was created by Alan Heinberg and Jim Chung, who's probably one of the most fantastic artists in the history of comics. Now, there's a couple things that we have to discuss here, right? The first one is who the Young Avengers are, why they matter. And the second is why Kate Bishop was created in the first place. So the Young Avengers was Marvel's attempt to kind of expand the Avengers roster and then change it at the same time. One of the things that we've talked about before, we don't really need to, to go in depth and rehash it here, is that in the aftermath of the 90s when Marvel went bankrupt, a guy named Joe Quesada came in as the new editor in chief and basically started implementing a whole bunch of changes in the sense that Marvel seemed to have lost its way over the course of the mid to late 1990s and even in Quesada's eyes going back into the 80s. And the desire was kind of to reset Marvel, so to speak. And so that's why Peter Parker's marriage to Mary Jane Watson was nullified. That's why the events of House of M happened where the mutant population was reduced from millions down to like 198. And that's the reason why Avengers Disassembled took place. Now, the idea of Avengers Disassembled was the first step in reworking the Avengers roster as a whole. Avengers Disassembled, as most of you guys know, is when the Scarlet Witch launched her attack against the Avengers. It was the events that led into House of M. But the idea here was that Tony Stark was basically uh, manipulated by the Scarlet Witch into appearing drunk in front of the United Nations and quite literally lambasting uh, foreign leaders, right? So he just, he went full on Rudy Giuliani. And the result of this is that Stark Industries value just plummeted. And because of that, Stark couldn't bankroll the Avengers anymore. And so this basically led to the Avengers disbanding. Now in the aftermath of this, Marvel did two major things. The first thing they did is that they basically followed up with the new Avengers, which was essentially a new Avengers team with a new roster. But the second thing they did is they created the Young Avengers. Now, the Young Avengers were initially an unsanctioned team, right? Which is to say, it was a bunch of teenagers that had basically come together and started operating as superheroes. The idea of Kate Bishop goes back a little bit further, but truth to tell, it was only in Young Avengers number one that she suddenly appears, and we didn't really know anything about her. And so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of sidetrack for a second, and we're going to focus on all new Hawkeye, which was basically the recreation of Kate Bishop, or at least the, the backstory of Kate Bishop, as it was fully given to us, right? Because up until the launch of that solo series, all we had had was Young Avengers special number one, which was really more of like a superhero roll call, right? That's really all it was, right? Everybody who's part of the Young Avengers, raise your hands. Here's a brief little bio about them. And that was basically it. The idea behind Kate Bishop is that unlike somebody like Hawkeye or something like that, she didn't really end up becoming the person that she was or becoming an Avenger because she was duped into operating alongside Black Widow, who was like a criminal at the time, and then eventually realized what was going on and became a good guy. Instead, Kate Bishop was born to a pretty wealthy family, and her father was a man that she'd idolized. Now, the relationship with the rest of her family was very tenuous and very, very strained. In fact, the relationship with her mother was virtually non-existent. But ultimately, Kate ends up learning the family's money and their wealth was basically built on, in a lot of ways, criminal acts. Following that, she kind of becomes disillusioned with the entire idea of her family as a whole and basically strikes out to kind of make her own way in the world. Now, one of the big similarities that was given to us with Kate Bishop and the original Hawkeye Clint Barton is that she's very, very stubborn and she's very, very independent. And in fact, that's something that a lot of young women really latched onto with the character of Kate Bishop. It's what they enjoyed, right? The fact that she would rather struggle and do it on her own than ask somebody for help because the lessons she'll learn in trying on her own and failing far outweigh the benefits she'll gain by asking somebody else for help and ultimately succeeding. The result of this is that Kate Bishop had actually bumped into Hawkeye. Now, for the most part, the idea between her and Clinton Barton being having a kind of father-daughter relationship wasn't really a major focal point at this point in time. It was more of the fact that she had come across Clint Barton and started to idolize Clint Barton and really modeled herself after him. But even then, her role as a superhero hadn't quite been fleshed out. A lot of this didn't really come to fruition until you got to the Young Avengers special. And what you actually ended up learning is that in Central Park, Kate Bishop was a victim of sexual assault. And the result of this is that following that, while she did go through a very tumultuous time period in her life following this particular ordeal, that she came out of it with this exceedingly high desire to ensure that she would be able to survive anything like that again. And so while the motivation behind her becoming something that was comparable to Clint Barton was different than what Clint Barton initially went through, the result was that in a lot of ways, she was very similar. Now I won't say she was as good as Clint Barton because truth to tell, I never really felt like Kate Bishop was as capable as Clint Barton was, but she was exceedingly exceptional. Now, a lot of this origin story was covered again in, in all new Hawkeye and Young Avengers special number one. And so what it does is it bookends into Young Avengers itself. 
life. Now at the time that Kate Bishop was introduced to Marvel Comics, the big question people had is why does it matter? Like, why are they doing this? Because initially over the course of Young Avengers in the first story arc, right? In the, the sidekick story arc, you didn't really know what role she was going to play. And in fact, when you actually saw her becoming part of the Young Avengers, she was kind of a hodgepodge of different people. She was using the Guardsman's sword. She was using the staves of Mockingbird as well as Mockingbird's mask. She was using these different aspects of different characters uh, across the Avengers landscape and really didn't have a full fleshed out identity. It wasn't until you got to the end of Young Avengers that she fully became what was in effect the new version of Hawkeye. Now there was an old interview that was done back in 2006 where Wizard Magazine had interviewed Alan Heinberg and they'd asked him, why create a new Kate Bishop? Why not just recreate Clint Barton? And the answer to this was because Clint Barton was largely a character who was deemed to be irrelevant by the time the events of House of M came around. And truth to tell, he was, right? I don't, I can't really imagine very many people who would have sided or would have kind of stood up and said, it's ridiculous that Marvel's replacing Clint Barton with Kate Bishop, right? They just need to make her a wholly different character. Clint Barton needs to stay. Nobody was really an advocate of Hawkeye. Hawkeye had been a largely irrelevant character for decades. And so it made perfect sense that if Marvel was going to legitimately kill anybody off, they would kill off Hawkeye, right? He's like one of the guys that nobody would really miss. Now, in all honesty, if we're, if we're being truthful here, the reason why Kate Bishop sort of fell to the wayside, and we'll talk more about that here in a little while, but the reason why she kind of fell to the wayside and Clint Barton sort of returned back to being a prominent character was because of the MCU, right? Because Jeremy Renner was cast as, as Clint Barton and he became a mainstay and we knew he was going to be in the Avengers film. So if anything, if for no other reason than to sell comics, Marvel had to basically bring Clint Barton back and make him a mainstay of, of Marvel Comics. But by all standards of measurement, at the time Young Avengers was launched, Clint Barton, while he was supposed to come back, was never supposed to go back to being a major focal point as far as the Hawkeye mythos went. That was all supposed to go to, to Kate Bishop. Now, in these early stories, because the Young Avengers were an unsanctioned team that were not you know officially recognized by the Avengers themselves, they just kind of did their own thing. The first question is, why did they exist? Well, the answer to this was given to us in the sidekick storyline when we ended up learning that somewhere along the line, the Vision had developed what was in effect a series of protocols so that if the Avengers were destroyed or disbanded, then a new generation would be tapped to become the Avengers in their place. Now, only three of them were really picked here, Hulkling, Patriot, and Wiccan. The other three just kind of showed up, particularly Kate Bishop and Cassie Lang. Now, the initial idea here as far as Kate Bishop and Cassie Lang felt was that like all the guys were being sexist because they wouldn't let them join. Eventually, they were like, no, it's simply that you were not picked by the Vision to be one of the new Avengers team or the, the Young Avengers team. So that's why we can let you guys join. But the situation in the first few Young Avengers stories unfolded in such a way to where Kate Bishop proved herself to be a valuable member of the team. And this particularly fell in relation to the events surrounding Iron Lad and Kang the Conqueror. Now, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Iron Lad, he's basically Kang when he was a teenager. And the idea is that in the 30th century, when Kang was like a full on adult and would go on to become this kind of multiversal conqueror that we're familiar with, he visited his younger self to show him what he would end up becoming. His younger self rejected the idea that he would become Kang the Conqueror. So he fled to the present day to become part of the Young Avengers and to serve as a superhero to defy the idea that he would ultimately end up becoming a villain. The way this all played out in the first Young Avengers, really the first couple Young Avengers story arcs is that if Iron Lad did not become Kang, reality itself would begin to fall apart. And that's why the stories of Iron Lad largely focus on the idea that he ultimately surrendered himself to Kang and then they went to the future and he was destined to become his future self, right? Things had to play out that way. If they didn't, the whole timeline would fall apart, right? And the reason is because if Iron Lad never becomes Kang, Kang doesn't exist. If Kang doesn't exist, Kang never meets the Avengers at those particular points in time. And because of that, the universe can't follow his present course. Therefore, the universe would simply cease to exist, right? Just one of those weird things. If anything, is just comic book storytelling. The, the, whole, the whole idea behind this is that when Kang showed up, he initially faced off against the Young Avengers and then the combined efforts of the Young Avengers and the Avengers themselves. During this point in time, while Kate Bishop was not a game changer, she basically demonstrated she was more than enough to hold her own against someone like Kang, who is largely considered to be one of the most dangerous villains the Avengers have ever faced and possibly even the most dangerous because of his ability to control time. And so with, with Kate Bishop demonstrating her prowess as a fighter in a lot of ways close to uh, the, the capabilities of Hawkeye, Cassie Lang being the daughter of Scott Lang, having the ability to grow and shrink, all these different things that ultimately the Young Avengers team was fully formed. Now, while the Young Avengers line would be canceled, the reality was Marvel didn't cancel it due to low sales. They canceled it because it was actually smarter to relaunch it and then actually cycle the Young Avengers around through different stories that were going on at the time to give them a, a larger fan base, right? To kind of advertise them and show people what they were capable of and so on and so forth. At the end of the day, the Young Avengers 
Avengers was cool. Uh, it wasn't the single most popular story that Marvel had published, but it did have some great stories going on in it. But with regards to, uh, to Kate Bishop herself, there were a few things that went on, but a lot of the stories involving this focused more on the young Avengers than really just Kate Bishop. There were some character-based story arcs that were going on, right? Because when you're basically dealing with a bunch of teenage superheroes, you're going to run into the teenage superhero element, right? That's been a mainstay of comics since the old Teen Titans comics over at DC. But I will say that one of the single biggest things as part of the Young Avengers was the actual taking of the Hawkeye mantle by Kate Bishop. And a lot of this happened because Kate Bishop acted in a way that was very similar to the way that Clint Barton would have acted in terms of the idea that Captain America had kind of stood in the face of the Young Avengers and said, no, you guys aren't ready. You guys don't need to be a superhero team. And Kate Bishop stood up to him in the same way Clint Barton would have. And so because Jessica Jones was kind of watching all this unfold, in her mind, while Kate Bishop may not necessarily have been on the same level in terms of capabilities as Clint Barton, she was Clint Barton in virtually every other facet of how she functioned and what she could bring to the table. And so in reality, it just made good sense that she would take up the mantle of Hawkeye, which she did. And so going forward, the big question that a lot of fans had is that if Kate Bishop had previously idolized Clint Barton, albeit if only from a distance, but now she had essentially taken on the mantle that was previously given to Clint and worse than that, had done it during the time in which he was dead, what would happen when the two of them officially met? Now we covered this to a degree in our original videos on Civil War, but honestly, we didn't go super in depth into it. And a lot of that is because the first real encounter between Kate Bishop as Hawkeye and Clint Barton, who'd been brought back and previously had been Hawkeye, didn't really take place until the Fallen Sun story arc. Now, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar, Fallen Sun was a really cool line of stories and it basically dealt with the aftermath of the assassination of Captain America. Now, the idea was that at the time, Tony Stark had actually approached Clint Barton about becoming Captain America, about taking up the shield, the costume, the whole nine yards. Kate Bishop wasn't really on board with it. And that was kind of a big deal because you would hope that when the two of them first met, that it would kind of be one of these things where it's like, I give you my blessing. You're pretty cool. Yeah, go ahead, be Hawkeye, do your thing. Instead, it was, it was him in a lot of ways taking a front to the idea that she had taken his mantle during the time in which he was dead, right? So taking offense to it. And the fact that she saw Clint Barton as taking over a role that no one should take over, right? No one should take over the mantle of Captain America, especially if the mantle is being offered to them by the person that most superheroes at the time blamed for the death of Captain America anyway, which was Tony Stark. That while Tony Stark didn't necessarily pull the trigger, and in fact, it wasn't really even him who was controlling Sharon Carter uh, and, and ultimately led to her shooting Captain America, a lot of people saw the death of Captain America as an extension of the initial Civil War event, which Tony Stark had caused. And so in a lot of ways, there was a huge amount of animosity towards Tony, uh, Tony Stark. And Kate Bishop had seen Tony Stark's actions in approaching anybody, you know, with the, you know, and offering them the mantle of Captain America as a huge sign of disrespect towards Steve Rogers. Now, her seeing Clinton Barton do this was enough that the two of them had a conversation and Clint Barton ultimately agreed and said, you know what, I think you're right. And so the two of them found mutual ground in their belief that Captain America was a mantle that had such a high honor that it shouldn't just be arbitrarily given away. Now, as we know, Tony Stark ended up choosing Bucky Barnes to be the person to become the new Captain America, but this was significant for the relationship between Clint Barton and, and Kate Bishop, because what it did is it gave us what was in effect the future of their characters. That you saw some things going on in between, right? Secret Invasion, Siege, different things like that. Like a lot of these stories that focus on the idea of the superhero landscape being shifted in a few different ways. But the biggest change, particularly for Kate Bishop in her relationship with Clint Barton, as well as just for Kate Bishop's development herself, came during Children's Crusade. Now, Children's Crusade was a colossal story, right? Up to this point in time, it was the biggest change for Kate Bishop. The Children's Crusade focused on an explanation of one, what the, the young Avengers, what their role is in the larger Marvel universe, and two, the character of Tommy and Billy. Now, Tommy and Billy, as most of you guys know, are the kids of Scarlet Witch. At the time when they first showed up, we didn't know. We had no idea they were the kids of Scarlet Witch. And in fact, they had their own lives, right? They had their own parents, the whole nine yards. There was no reason to believe they were in any way tied into Wanda Maximoff. We ended up learning that they were, but for Kate Bishop, this was a huge moment. And the reason why is because at the end of Children's Crusade, the young Avengers were officially sanctioned as a branch off team from the Avengers themselves. Now, the reason why this was so important for Kate Bishop and, and by extension, really everybody else, but the reason why it was so important for Kate Bishop is because it was the superhero community officially recognizing that one, she was Hawkeye and two, what she could bring to the table, right? Officially getting that mantle. Up until this point in time, she was in a lot of ways, kind of a reflection of how some fans saw her, which was a cast off. I mean, even if you go back and you look at the old Alan Heinberg stories, she didn't want the Hawkeye mantle, right? She didn't want that. She took it grudgingly, but she didn't really want 
wanted in the same way that Carol Danvers didn't really want the Captain Marvel mantle during the Kelly Sue DeConnick run and then ultimately took it, right? So it's one of these things where Kate Bishop had kind of evolved and grown and become an actual officially recognized member of the Avengers landscape. Following that, the adventures between her and Clint Barton were awesome because in a lot of ways, it was really kind of like a superhero and not really a sidekick, but really just kind of a dual superhero team that as Kate Bishop served alongside Hawkeye, her skills expanded dramatically because she had Clint Barton teaching her seemingly everything she needed to know. Everything Clint Barton knew about like spy work, about subterfuge, espionage, about how to use a multitude of different weapons. She was by no means incompetent when she first showed up, but she was not Clint Barton level. Ultimately, she got to that point. Now, a lot of this came by way of what is by many considered to be one of the most celebrated Hawkeye runs of all time, which was Hawkeye Volume 4 by Matt Fraction. This story was fantastic. The funny thing about this is Matt Fraction's Hawkeye run was kind of the story that came at the right place at the right time, if we're being honest, right? By this point in Kate's history, the stage had been set, right? It was kind of like, okay, she's fully recognized as being a member of the Avengers team. Clint Barton is her mentor. He's the guy that's, that's going to go forward and teach her the kind of things she needs to know to be every bit as capable as him. Who's going to be the one to handle it? And the way that Matt Fraction wrote this was fantastic because in a lot of ways, it was kind of a buddy cop story, right? It was so cool the way their adventures transpired and the way they took place. It's one of the stories that I usually tell people they should always go check out. It was in a lot of ways, a kind of buddy cop slash father, daughter, mentor, mentee kind of relationship. And it was cool. One thing I do want to clarify, as far as I'm aware, there was never really anything in the realm of impropriety. I'm not really familiar with Clint Barton and Kate Bishop having had any kind of a romantic uh, involvement with each other just because of how they saw each other, right? I mean, they, they saw each other as, as, as like father and daughter, right? So, you know, this is not the ultimate universe. <laughs> you know, the, the stories as they were told by Matt Fraction were great, right? They were incredible character development. And I always tell people, if you're ever interested in getting into Kate Bishop, that's the story to read. Now, because of the success of Matt Fraction's run, the partnership between Kate Bishop and Clint Barton became a mainstay for quite some time. And really this ran all the way up to the events of All New Hawkeye Volume 2. And this was significant because what you had here was the first real beginnings of a rift between the two, where I wouldn't say things were perfect, right? You know, it wasn't like things were perfect and it was happily ever after and it was nothing but laughs and giggles, right? I mean, there were times where they had disagreements, but if anything, it was a kind of a partnership disagreement, right? Where the, the general understanding, the mutual understanding is, yes, we don't see eye to eye, but at the end of the day, we're still good friends, we get along. All that began to change was something called Project Communion. Now, Project Communion was given to us as this sort of project that was launched by Hydra, that in a lot of ways was designed to be Hydra's own version of Weapons Plus, right? The projects that gave birth to like Captain America, Frank Simpson Nuke, Wolverine, but they actually did it with kids. And the way this worked was that these kids were subjected to a litany of experiments that gave them powers that were not fully defined. Ultimately, they were taken by S.H.I.E.L.D. and Kate Bishop knew, as well as Clint Barton, that S.H.I.E.L.D. was going to end up using them for nefarious purposes, right? They were going to study them, they were going to examine him, they were going to tell him lies and then ultimately turn him into S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Kate Bishop didn't want them to have that. Instead, she wanted them to have as close to a normal life as they possibly could have. Now, a lot of this went back to the early roots of Kate Bishop when she was created by Alan Heinberg. The idea that she had volunteered at soup kitchens, she was very much a kind of charitable person as opposed to Clint Barton, who wasn't really a jerk so much as a person who believed that what he was doing was usually always the right thing to do. And so what ended up happening here is both Kate Bishop and Clint Barton basically busted the kids out from a shield helicarrier and then took them back to Clint's place. Hydra caught up to them, a whole fight broke out, the kids ended up killing the Hydra agents, and then Clint Barton basically responded by saying, no, they need to be handed back over again, right? Like these kids are legitimate weapons, right? They're dangerous. Because of what happened, because of Clint's response to this and, and having such a dramatic event take place in the life of, Kate's, uh, of Kate herself, they simply couldn't find common ground on this. And so ultimately, Clint Barton relented. They ended up rescuing the Project Communion kids in the first place. And while they were able to mend ties to a degree, the relationship was never the same, right? That Clint Barton was like, look, you're my best friend. Everything's cool. And Kate, you know, kind of responded by saying, well, you're still my hero. But at the end of the day, the writing was on the wall. It was only a matter of time before the two of them began, the, or at least the process started them going their own separate ways because their relationship was irrevocably changed. It was one of these instances when Clint Barton just didn't trust the viewpoints of Kate Bishop, something that he had done with seeming the greatest of ease up to that point. But truth to tell, by this point in time, right, we were already out of Secret Wars, right? We're already out of Secret Wars from 2015, right? Things are going forward. You've already got, uh, you know, Jeremy Renner playing Hawkeye in, in the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Avengers in 2012, and even some of the movies leading up to that point. The honest truth here was that because Jeremy Renner was Hawkeye in the MCU, and during this point in time, and even now, Marvel Comics really
really mimics the MCU more than the MCU mimics Marvel Comics, we basically ended up seeing Kate Bishop fall to the background, right? Fall to the wayside. She wasn't ignored entirely. She had some interesting stories, right? When like Old Man Logan, Wolverine from an alternate reality ended up showing up in the main Marvel universe, that Kate Bishop was one of the people that kind of helped to bring him back and help him realize he's not actually in his own universe. He's not in the past of his own universe. He's in a wholly different universe now. But by and large, she was a background character, right? She was just kind of a character off doing her own thing. In more recent years with Hawkeye by uh, by Kelly Thompson, she's taken up a kind of investigative mantle on her own. But again, there hasn't really been a whole lot from her character in terms of her kind of returning to what was in effect the more prominent version of herself that we'd seen during the days of the Young Avengers and especially during Matt Fraction's run. Now, to be honest with you guys, that's probably going to change now that she's got a TV show, but we won't really know until we find out how the TV show ends. That by all standards of measurement, from what we can tell, it looks like Clint Barton is going to take a background. He might might even retire, but we also know that coming out of the Black Widow movie that the sister of Natasha Romanoff is now being set on course to basically track down Clint Barton. So whether he'll be gone forever, we don't really know. We don't know if Kate Bishop is going to be his first attempt to train somebody new. Kate Bishop dies at the end of like the Hawkeye series. So he turns to his daughter and she ends up becoming like the new Hawkeye. We don't really know what form this is going to take. We'll kind of have to wait till the show comes out to get a better idea of it. If I'm a betting man, Marvel's setting the stage for the new slash young Avengers. Kate Bishop's going to do fine. She's going to survive to the end of it. She's going to go on into the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, right? The TV shows are basically just being used to set the stage for like the next set of MCU movies. And they'll just follow that pattern using shows to set the stage for movies and just kind of going from there. Uh, but again, you know, at this point, not a whole lot going on with Kate Bishop and there really hasn't been for quite some time. But with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you all later. Peace.